Hi there, and welcome to this LiquiBase instructional video. The topic of this video is rollback for SQL file change sets. So that means that we'll be covering adding rollback instructions to SQL file change sets. We'll look at the rollback process and do an example in a working demo environment of the tool. So adding rollback instructions is very straightforward. When you create your SQL file change set, as we saw in another video, that there is a space where you can add undo instructions or rollback instructions for that change set. And what that means is that you're going to specify the undo instructions for the change in a second SQL file. Now, just like the, the change itself, this is simply native SQL for whatever database engine you're working with, Postgres, SQL Server, uh, Oracle, whatever you're using. And the same applies to the undo instructions. They're just native SQL that undoes what you're doing. Now, the reason that this is valuable is that having that undo instruction in the change set and change log itself means that you're creating a permanent connection between the forward and the backward instructions so that you always know that if you do want to roll back a particular change set, you know specifically what the undo instructions are and they're always going to be done exactly the same way. So every time that change set is included in a list of change sets that you're rolling back, you can have confidence that those undo instructions will be precisely what is done. Okay, so looking at the process and how you set this up, you go start off using the same process as creating a SQL file change set. Again, we have a video on this topic, but you go through the change set wizard, select the database engine, the command line tool for your database engine, specify the forward change set, go through the summary, and on the uh, finalized page, you specify the metadata just as before, but go down towards the bottom of that finalized page and you'll see a rollback settings section. You're going to toggle the radio button here to specify a SQL to revert this change set. And it will present you with a dialog box where you can specify a rollback file. Right, and best practice is to have a file that you specify and attach. You can, in this dialog box, put the SQL in and kind of create or author the script right there, but it's better to have something uh, in a separate file that you've validated and verified rather than, than embedding it here. Then, once you, fin you click Finish, it's going to pull the change set in both the forward and now the rollback instructions that match and you have a new change set in your change log that is deployable. The deploy process is still the same. You click the deploy button or you deploy it with options. Once it's been deployed you now have the option of rolling that change set back. There's a just as there's a deploy button there's a rollback button down below on the bottom right of each dbdef record and when you click that you're given three options now really only two of them are applicable there's rollback by list and rollback last deploy the rollback by label setting is there primarily to provide backward compatibility to liquibase enterprise customers and that feature has actually been deprecated uh, but obviously there's an install base and customers uh, customers with that product who've been using it for a long time do still have a need for that and so backward compatibility is preserved there. For our purposes and for all uh, for anything new it's always rollback by list or rollback last deploy. Now the difference between them is is pretty straightforward. Rollback last deploy is a convenience feature that will roll back all the changes in the immediate previous deployment operation. So if you deploy three change sets, those are the three change sets that will be rolled back. You can't do more or less than those three. It, it is uh, just a quick reversion of whatever you're doing. 
Now, if you need to do something more sophisticated, something that's either more or less than the last deploy operation, you need to do it by list. Now, the list operation simply undoes sequentially all of the change sets uh, up to the point that you specify. And the idea when you select that, and it's important to remember, is that it will proceed to the point, but not including the point you select. So in our example here, uh, if you want to eliminate that one, two, three change set that's at the bottom of the list, you would select the record immediately above the record you want to roll back or to the, the point to, you want to roll back to. Okay, once you've selected that, and in either case, you're going to get a, a rollback report that says what's going to be rolled back. Click finish. The change is rolled back. And uh, you, get, you get a summary. Click finish on the summary. And you go back to the status screen. Important thing to note here is that even though you roll a change set back out of a dbdef, the change set remains in the change log for the project, which means that you can redeploy that change set, you can deploy it to a different DB dev, whatever you need to do. Until you explicitly remove the change set from your change log, that change set will be usable within your project. Okay, so next step is we're going to go walk through an example and do all of these steps and see what it looks like in real life. Okay, here we are in our example environment. We're going to walk through the process of creating a SQL file change set, associating some rollback instructions with that change set, then once it's in our change log, we'll deploy it to one of our DB devs and roll it back out just to look at what the process is, what that workflow actually looks and feels like when you're doing it in a real situation. So to create a SQL file change set, of course, we launch the change set wizard. We need to select the command tool for our database engine. This is a SQL Server environment, so I want SQL command. Go ahead and click Next. Browse to my example file. Click Next. Look at the summary. Click Finalize. Again, I have to specify some metadata here, so give it a ID and an author. I'm also going to go ahead and add a label. And at this point, I've done everything I need to to set up to create a SQL file change set. But of course, we want to add rollback instructions. And that means we have to come down here to where it says rollback settings and say that we're going to specify SQL to revert this change set. We click this. We're given a next button down at the bottom. Click the next button. And here it allows us to reference an existing SQL script or create a new one. Best practice is to always use an existing SQL script. It's not that the other doesn't work. It's just tidier, easier to manage, and you can do more validation on the SQL script before you include it in your change log if you, if you take the time to use an external script. Okay, so I've specified my rollback script. I click Finish. Now the change set has been created with its associated rollback instructions. I can update my status, see that I've got a pending change set, look at the undeployed changes. Here's my new one. We should be ready to go. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to my sandbox environment in this case. I get my deployment report that everything was successful. Very nice. Happy about that. And now I want to roll this back. And so you may be thinking, well, why would I want to just roll it right back out of a sandbox? Well, frankly, testing rollback and making sure that rollback works as expected is an intrinsic part of testing your SQL changes, testing your database changes, making sure 
that before you share them with the rest of the team, they are in fact good and worthy of merging to the overall pipeline. Uh, arguably, there should be clear rollback capability and instructions for any inbound SQL change uh, before a pull request to incorporate the, the SQL change is accepted. Right? Think of it as rollback-driven development, kind of like test-driven development, but for your database changes. So, the change is in. Click rollback. I'm given the opportunity to take the easy route of just roll back the last deploy, or I can roll back by list. I'm going to go ahead and use list to show how that works. I click next. I get the list of changes. I scroll down. And here's the thing. I want to be sure I select the change immediately above the one I want to go away, or the list of changes that I want to go away. So in this case, I only have one, so I select immediately above it. If I wanted to go farther, I would select up here, and I would get these four. It wouldn't take the fifth, the one I've selected. It's up to the point. You're specifying the point you want to roll back to, not inclusive of the one selected. Okay, so in our case, it's really just the one. Make sure my selection is immediately above where I want to stop. Go ahead, click roll back. It runs, it gives me a little report. I click finish, update my pipeline status. And once again, my changes in the undeployed tab. Okay, so that's the process. You create the SQL file change set using the normal process. At the end, as you're specifying the metadata, you add the instructions for undoing the change. You add the SQL file to undo the change and back the change back out of your change log. And then you have the capability to, to deploy that change or undeploy that change with a rollback into any of the DB DEFs under management in the project. Thank you for watching this Liquibase educational video. We certainly hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions or need any more information, please feel free to reach out to us through our website or various social media outlets. Thanks again. Have a good day.